I love it. Um, uh, I, yes, uh, I am. My name's Andrew Shea. I've been with Zillow for gosh, about six years now, coming up on six years. Prior to this, I was in commercial banking. So was it Louis? Yeah. Louis, I was, I was the same thing. I was in commercial banking for about 12 years. And, uh, um, and then, you know, the uh, uh, recession hit you know, back 2010, 2011, when hurt, it started to hit the commercial banks. And so um, banks just had started folding and closing. And I found myself uh, looking for something different. And I wound up at this small company back that I didn't really know about. It was called Zillow. It turns out they're kind of a big deal. And uh, <laughs> yeah, fast forward six years later, here I am. Uh, I've worked as a, a business consultant um, for probably the first four years uh, of my time at Zillow. And I was the guy that used to pitch zip codes to, um, you know, gentlemen like Enrique and Jason to say, spend as much money as you can with us to buy as many leads. And they would. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they would buy more. How many of you are familiar with that program? Has anyone bought leads here from Zillow before? Okay. Anybody close leads from leads you bought? Okay. That's called market-based pricing. Uh, that is the flagship product of, of Zillow. Um, that's what we're known for. Uh, you know, we, we allow, we, we sell uh, zip code exposure to agents so that they can, you know, get leads and in turn convert them and, and make money. The Flex program is different. So this is something that um, I got involved with about two years ago. Uh, the Flex program, this is different. It's no longer agents are paying to get leads. We are actually giving the leads to the agents now. Uh, and if they close a the deal, they pay us a referral fee on the back end. So um, the key here, you can, you can guess is conversion. So it's exciting when I hear Alfredo, shout out to Alfredo and Louie. And there's probably a couple other here that have closed deals. I'm sure actually a lot of them that have closed deals are from uh, Flex. And uh, that's how everybody wins in Flex is when conversion happens. So that being said, we don't roll out flex to everyone. Um, in fact, uh, uh, company-wide, I think we have roughly about 600 to 700 flex partners nationwide. We've got a whole bunch of people, uh, agents that are paying for uh, paid leads, market-based pricing, but we hand select uh, teams. We have sales executives that go out and, and kind of scout the, the lay of the land and find out who the top teams are um, and not, not specific agents, but teams uh, that, you know, we approach and say, hey, we've got this program called Flex. Uh, would you like to you know, hear more about it? And um, actually now there's teams that are waiting. They're on a wait list or they're calling in because they want to be a part of Flex. Uh, because, you know, let's be frank, you know, who has $20,000, $30,000 a month that they can spend to get paid leads? As an individual agent, that's not doable, right? But as a team, if you're part of Flex and you're a strong performing team, we want to you know, keep feeding the machine here, so to speak, uh, to get leads in your hands. And if you are good at converting, um, everybody wins, right? Every, you know, conversion solves, solves everything in this program. And the more you win, the more we want to send you. In fact, we have conversations about, hey, what's the future plans for this office, for this team? Do we want to grow? Do we want to expand into different areas? And if you're performing well, yeah, we want to, we want to partner with those teams to scale them and, in a sense, rinse and repeat in different areas. So uh, at a very high level, that's what Flex is. Uh, that's what I'm involved with. Um, before I go any further, any, any questions or about the Flex program, high level? Oh, Jerry. Six hundred nationwide teams, and I guess when I'm thinking like in a larger scope of business, is there any, I guess, specific reason why it just doesn't scale to like a larger set of like potential teams? But I wouldn't, I guess, take over the market share of you know more areas. I'm just thinking like super. Big. Yeah, so that's a really great question. Um, you know, Zillow is a, a for-profit company, and then this is all revenue driven. So you have to think about um, in the flex program there's no revenue realized until conversion happens. 
right? And so there's not an infinite amount of leads. Uh, we, we have the largest audience of, of consumers using our site in our space, right? In, in the tech space, real estate tech space. Um, the number, uh, they just uh, revealed the, or published the consumer report, 198 million unique visitors come to Zillow every month, okay? We connect a buyer to an agent every four seconds. That's, that's what we're dealing with. Now, that's a big number, but it's not an infinite number, yeah. right? And so we have, again, our flagship business is market-based pricing where we realize a revenue upfront. Flex is really special because if we do this right as a company and we partner with the right teams, that's the key. We have to partner with the right teams. Um, the revenue model with Flex is very strong too, but we have to partner with teams that can convert and that are, you know, are good partners. And it's, it's, it's conversion mainly, let's not be, let's, let's not kid anybody, right? Conversion solves everything, but there's other aspects of flex as well that we pay high attention to as well. Um, you're, you might've heard of the uh, customer experience survey, right? That CSAT score, uh, it, Jason and Enrique probably have talked with you about, you know, the team score, which is a composite of all your individual uh, customer experience scores, right? So for, for us at Zillow, when we think about that 198 million unique visitors, they keep coming back because they're having a good experience on Zillow, right? There's a lot of content. We, you know, we spent a lot of money building a platform that's user-friendly, but also the experience of, of consumers that want to buy a home that actually use Zillow, and there's a lot of people that do, right? If their experience is good, what do you think happens? Exactly, right? Everybody knows the power of social media here. We just talked about it this morning. Um, and if, if, uh, if Alfredo bought a home on Zillow and had a great experience, worked with a phenomenal agent, what do you think Alfredo is going to do? He's going to tell everybody like, hey, how'd you find your house? Well, I found it on Zillow. Okay, maybe I should go on Zillow. Yeah, actually, you should go on Zillow. And actually, hey, I worked with this really good agent. Let me refer this agent to you. So um, I'm kind of setting the stage here of a couple of things I want to hit today. Um, you know, first of all, what is Flex? And then who's a good fit for Flex? Because not everybody's a good fit. Some partners that we have are actually better at market-based pricing because they just like to, they want to control their own destiny, right? In Flex, again, you heard it from, from Enrique, I bust their chops every week when we get on the phone. Because we are, we are all about knowing your numbers. This is a, a business that they're running here. And we want the Flex program to be a part of their business. This has to make sense to them financially in, in order to keep doing this. Otherwise, you know, there's the other option of, hey, we, you know, we'll pay for our own leads. We know that return on investment. You know, as long as we keep converting, we can conceivably buy more leads, right? And keep growing that way. Or the other side is, right, this flex program where, hey, you can get a lot of leads, which would be really expensive in market-based pricing um, in, in the flex program, but we got to convert. So we got to get the right agents on the team. I know not everybody here is on flex. Who's on flex here, first of all? Raise your hands. Okay, so about well, less than half. Um, and, and those who aren't on flex, maybe you're considering it, or maybe this is the first time you're actually in the office too. So uh, I'll put my pitch out there uh, for you to talk to Enrique and Jason about being part of the flex team. But I also want you to know um, what makes a good flex agent because I've seen and I've worked with so many teams and I could see which teams are gonna succeed. And specifically when we get to the agent level, we talk about specific agents on, on some of the teams I work with as well. And um, you know, sometimes the, the team leads have to make a difficult decision to, to let that agent know like, hey, you know, this program is just not a good fit for you. Um, so we'll talk about, you know, who is a fit for Flex. And then at the end, we'll talk about, is it worth it? And I think those of you that are on Flex right now who have closed deals, uh, first of all, it's, it's Louie, right? Louie, you, you've been on Flex for a week, right? A week. $2 million buyer that you're working with right now, right? Let me tell you, that's not always going to be the case, okay? <laughs> um, it's a grind and, it's a, it, and you have to hustle and you have to work really hard at this, but it shouldn't be easy. This job shouldn't be easy. If it is, everybody would be doing it, right? So um, 
Great. Um, uh, thank you for the question about Flex, high how level. Many, how many teams are you coaching? I work with 20. Yeah, I work with 20 teams and a majority of my teams are in Southern California uh, where I live and uh, the other, um, I'd say about the other third I work with are in San Jose. I have a couple partners in Santa Cruz as well. So I like the Bay Area. So I, yeah, it's a special place here. Any other questions? Okay, Let, let's talk about um, who is a fit for Flex. Um, I'm going to lay out a couple of things. I, I was thinking about this uh, this week and I was thinking about the partners that I work with and the agents that I see that are excelling. Because uh, believe it or not, those of you who are on Flex, I see your performance metrics all the time. I run reporting all the time for Jason and Enrique on, on how the team is doing as a whole and on the agents as well. Um, you know, to see like, what can we coach up and who can we coach up uh, to do better? All this is, you know, it's kind of that tough love, right? I, you know, I, my, my desires for the team to do well, but it would be great. And I love hearing stories of, you know, Alfredo, Louis, and, you know, uh, deals that you, uh, buyers that you would not have otherwise met, right? If you are not on this platform and not only will you close a transaction and, um, you know, get a paycheck out of it, but you will have a relationship with that buyer. And who was the one that went out and had, I learned something new today. Is it Swirls? Yeah. yeah. That, was a, like, that was a flex. That, that, that was a flex. I was like, oh, I'm, what's Swirls? And then I'll I, take you to Swirls. Yeah, then I, they're like, oh, I, I think I know what Swirls is now. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you, you built a relationship with this buyer that uh, in the future, probably will contact you again if they're looking to upgrade or downgrade their house, right? Uh, and if they have friends or family that are looking for a home in the area, um, you'll probably come top of mind. So it, this kind of plays into, is it worth it, right? Um, we, we call it internally at Zill the lifetime value of a client. A lot of people will, will spend a ton of money to source leads because they know that they can literally build the future of their business on that. Every person you work with and you interact with provided that you're doing a, a rock star job with them, they're going to be a, a potentially a client for life, right? So if you had to pay X amount of dollars to get that lead, for some teams, it's worth it. You know, yeah, I won't make much money on this first transaction, you know, because I paid X amount of dollars to get this trend, uh, this lead, this buyer, but the future is very promising, right? If they, if they really enjoy working with you. All right. There's so, some people trying to ask Got it. No, I'm gonna turn off the. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm gonna turn off the broadcast because it's making me. Okay. Let's see how these... Oh yeah. <laughs> Since we're not gonna do this slide. Yeah, yeah. Let's slide so, yeah. Okay. so let me uh, let me just uh, while Enrique's fixing this here, um, who is a fit for Flex? First, first of all, let me just make it clear: full time agents. Okay, if you're a part time agent, Flex is not a good fit for you because. You're going to be held accountable to performance metrics, uh, specific performance metrics, to not just conversion, but we measure um, we measure how well you are at setting appointments. We listen to your phone calls when you get that call from Zillow. They're all recorded, We're recorded for you to go back and listen to as well. Because if you listen to your own phone calls, you know you may cringe and go, "Well, why did I say that? Or why did I not say something?" Or Gosh, now that I listened to this phone call, I could see that the buyer was totally disengaged with me because I was just boring them to death and I didn't answer their questions, right? So um, we get very tactical, uh, you know, every week. We talk about, hey, if they've set, you know, these appointments, when did they meet them? How quickly did they meet? What is their met rate? And then how quickly did it take for them to go from meeting the buyer for the first time to submitting an offer to the offer table? And how are they submitting these? So there's all these metrics that we track for the agents individually, which uh, co uh, compose the uh, um, comprise the, uh, the the team metrics. Ultimately, we evaluate a, a partner on the team metric, how they're performing overall. And again, the biggest component is conversion. And if conversion is happening at a strong clip, right? Uh, everyone's making money. Zillow's making money. The team's making money. You as agents are making money. And we want to send more to you as a result. So again, this is a, a platform that allows you to scale. Um, you need to be uh, a tech savvy. I, I don't think 
there's anyone here who isn't, uh, you are in the area of tech here, but uh, app engagement is really important with uh, Zillow Flex. Um, you have to update your contacts. You have to update the status of how you're performing with your leads or how you're progressing, not performing. Let me say how you're progressing with your leads, letting us know that's how we track all the metrics, right? What's your appointment setting rate, what's your met rate, your off rate, and so on. That way we can see on a weekly basis, what's the, the pipeline of this team? Is it healthy? Can we expect you know, transactions to happen relatively soon? If there's no transactions happening, is the pipeline, is your body of work in the last week or last 30 days, is it um, such that Enrique and Jason can feel confident that we will have transactions happening within the next couple of weeks? You mentioned something about giving credit for your work. That was something, a, a phrase that you used early on that we kind of ran with. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's, sometimes deals take a while to close, right? And sometimes you get to the finish line and you don't take that step that where you actually cross the finish line because the deal falls through. It happens. Part of this business, you just kind of like have to, you know, short-term memory. But that being said, right, uh, if you're not closing, converting, at least is your body of work, right? Is your uh, body of work um, uh, acceptable, you know, to the leaders of this team, right? Th are you showing that you're putting in the hustle, the effort and building your pipeline? Yeah, you know, deals can falter at the last minute or, or, you know, you could put your best foot forward and then somebody offers 500,000 more than your offer, right? It's like, what can I do? Um, there's nothing you can do about that. So um, tech savvy, you have to be coachable, okay? Uh, this is, the game is changing. Who said that? Um, you have to play the game, right, Louis? The game has changed. If you've been in real estate a long time ago, the game has changed since then. So much of this is, um, is, uh, is media driven. It's image, right? It's, and it's a lot of things that you're having to adjust to. So you have to be coachable. Um, uh, one of the big signs that uh, an agent's not a fit for flex is, you know, we provide a lot of coaching for our partners because we see best practices of teams that are converting at a high level across the nation. And I want to share that with all of my partners so that we can replicate and do the same thing. Um, but if you're not coachable, this is not a good fit for you. Uh, if you're not willing to learn, if you're kind of stuck in the old ways, like I'm just going to do it this way, this is going to be hard for you. This will be hard for you. Um, accountable to, to know your numbers, right? We talked about the metrics that we measure. You have access on the Flex platform to see all of your metrics as well. Um, and you can see how you're performing. And then your team leads will also, you know, have one-on-one -on -one meetings with you. That's, you know, what we coach the teams to do uh, and talk about performance metrics, talk about expectations and know the path to success, right? In, in short, what I would love to see with all my teams is that uh, agents can close one out of 10 leads that they get. That's a 10% con conversion rate, right? So that means that out of 100 leads, right, you close 10 of them. That means that there's a lot of leads that you don't close, a lot of buyers that you get bummed out about and you think are a waste of time, but that's part of the game. Do you know what the nationwide conversion rate of online leads is? What's that? 4%. Yeah, 4%, 3 or 4%. So my goal, if I'm working with an elite team in the area, is can we get our conversion rate up to 10%, right? So that's, you know, that's, that's what uh, would want, that would warrant us to want to approach a team and say, hey, we want you to grow your team. You guys are converting at a 10% rate. Everybody's making good money. We're closing a lot of deals. Let's get more buyers in front of you. Let's scale your team. Um, and the last thing here, you know, who's a fit for flex is uh, it, people who hustle. You can't, you can't be successful uh, in, in, this, uh, in this job, in this business without hustle. Um, late nights uh, and uh, updating your, your CRM system, making sure you put your notes in, being on time to your meetings, coming to the team meeting, coming, showing up to your one-on-ones, being professional uh, and just, just flat out hustling, right? That's, that's what's gonna win the day. Uh, and especially in flex, uh, that's, that's what I see. Um, any questions on like, who's a, a fit for flex? How do you choose your teams? How do you find that? 
there's also weightless as well. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not involved in that process. We have sales executives that um, that will scour our uh, for. We'll, we'll look first at our market-based pricing partners, um, and and typically the ones that are spending a lot are spending a lot because they're finding success. You know, they're not they're not giving us money for free. They they need to make money. So if they're big spenders, typically they're converting at a decent rate. So uh, they'll go through an interview process. Um, they have to be nominated uh, by you know whoever their rep is that's working with them. Yeah. And I know that you mentioned the but I guess what would be like the smallest duplicate? Is there any sort of individual agents that say that they're converting at a high level? Yeah. Maybe like a smaller team. Like, is that something that you guys look for? Or is that just maybe like an out, like helping people a larger? Yeah, I, you know, the, the average size of my team is probably about 10 to 20. Um, I have some teams that are smaller than that. It's difficult when you're a smaller team. It's not impossible, but you, you know, when you're a smaller team, you can't handle that much volume. And also if somebody gets sick or somebody needs to take a break and we want to send you all these leads, but you only have like one person that can take leads, um, it's hard. So uh, we're testing out in a couple markets, uh, there's some top producing individual agents and we're testing out the concept of flex with them. I don't know if that's gonna fly. I really think the future of this program is with large teams that can scale um, because they have the bandwidth to be able to handle you know, higher lead volume. And again, you know, I, I mean, in the middle of the pandemic, we, we had teams that literally were wiped out because they just couldn't go anywhere, right? And and people are getting sick and, you know, we're supposed to send them a, a lot of volume of leads and all of a sudden the whole team is sick. Like, uh, who can answer the phone now? Who can take the call? So, but, uh, you know, the larger teams can, can handle that because they're always recruiting new agents. And so for those of you who are new here, um, this is a great opportunity too. I'd, I'd like to hear from, is there anyone who's not part of the office here? Who's brand new, you know, you're yes. doing this first time. Yes, yeah. Any questions that you have? Is it uh, food? I'm new, but I don't have no Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm also new, but I have no questions. Okay. Good. Welcome. I think the other thing, Andrew, is that, like you said, if 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 a goal is ten percent, you got to get a hundred leads to convert ten of them. A small team is not going to be able to go through all hundred leads and yeah, at a high know, level, at a high level yeah. right? It's 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 overwhelming, right? Like if you get fifteen or twenty leads in a month, you're already like. Drowning, yeah. Right? What happens is they, it just keeps every month you're getting, them, and then they're right? stacking, right? You're compounding from the lead you had last month and the previous month, and yeah, and those are the things we talked about, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. is how many people can you realistically keep in your your book of business? How many buyers can you really keep in touch with and and know when you see their name? Oh, that's this person, yeah. I met, we saw this house, and you know, we've yeah, I know about their family. I, it's not that many. It's like your Facebook friends, right? Yeah, you, you look at that number, you go, I don't know how many people. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me talk, uh, let me switch to, how are we doing on time? We're right about at- Yeah, uh, we got about 30 more minutes. Oh, okay, okay, good. Um, is it worth it? Uh, let, let me uh, address that question, especially as you, you know, consider some agents who are new here, some agents that are part of the office, but not uh, part of Flex yet, uh, or maybe thinking about it. Um, some statistics here I jotted down yesterday, uh, 2022, our, uh, consumer, uh, report that we published said that it's, we're estimating, um, nationwide 6.35 million homes to be sold. And that's an increase of what they originally thought is 6.12. Now that number is significant because that number, if we hit that number, that will be the highest amount of volume of homes sold since 2006, right? That's phenomenal. So one of the opportunities of Flex, again, is do you want to be a part of what's going to happen? Like this is, I mean, uh, I don't want to say unprecedented because it's, it's been used so much, but uh, this is a historic time for us. This year, right, uh, if you know, we hit that volume and we already know um, how scarce it is to have homes on the market right now. Uh, do you want to be a part of, 
you know, real estate, real estate titans in this industry right now that are part of, that are going to sell that 6.35 million. I think that's the opportunity of Flex too. So is it worth it? You, you get a lot of that bats, right? Uh, um, Alfredo, you take calls. Actually, who else here takes Flex calls? Okay. Do you ever, uh, you know, does your phone ring pretty frequently? Yeah. Yeah, yeah right? So those of you who aren't part of Flex here, right? How else are you going to meet buyers? You can go knock on doors. Okay, go do that in the summer. <laughs> yeah, no, right? Or if you're back east, you want to knock on doors right now? No, right? How about if people just call you? Right? Oh, yeah, I like that. How about if they call you a lot? So how many of you have taken calls here? And then right after you hang up the phone, you talk to a buyer, your phone rings again. Okay, you see where I'm going with this, the opportunity that you have. For those of you who are on Flex, you know what you have. Those of you who aren't on Flex, uh, those of you who are on the outside looking in, consider that opportunity. Okay, I forgot to mention, uh, you know, who's a good fit for Flex? Let me talk about who's not a good fit for Flex. Okay, because there, there are uh, people who are not a good fit for Flex. Uh, on the positive side, if you've been in the industry forever, for like, you know, 15, 20 years, and you have a, you know, referral base that's giant, Flex is probably not a good fit for you, right? Because you have to give up a referral fee, you know, when you sell a home. And if you already have so much business coming in, repeat business, yeah. But here's the, th here's the kicker. For those of you who are new to real estate, 15 years from now, you could be that agent, right? That rely, you know, that really can close, uh, you know, 20 transactions um, a year sitting at home on Zoom in their boxers, right? Because they're that good, right? They're that good because their business comes, you know, from referrals, from friends and uh, people that they've worked with for a long time. They put in the work, they hustled. So I, you know, uh, Jason and Enrique, you, you've seen this like new agents, people who just got their license, people who have been in the business maybe only a year or two, that haven't, you know, their phones aren't ringing all the time with new, it's, um, they're trying to build their business. That's their good fits for Flex. So think about that opportunity. Um, and I, you're gonna add something to yeah, that? Yeah, The absolutely. other thing to mention is that even people that have been in the business 15 to 20 years, a lot of them don't do a good job at nurturing their database, right? There's a lot of agents that have been in the game 20 years who aren't closing a lot of deals, True. who don't have mm -hmm. huge books of business, right? Yeah. Because that's really the hard part. That's staying in touch with your clients, yeah. right? Yeah, it's something that it's it's really overlooked. So I think flex can still be good for those type of agents, right? It just depends how much volume they currently have, right? Yeah. What they got coming in. You have to be coachable, right? You have to be coachable. You have to be willing to learn. Um, for those agents, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, because your referral base, they're not buying homes every year, right? They buy a home like once every 10, 15 years. And so you wait a long time for them to repeat again. I mean, they can send you referrals in between. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you're going to be doing this for all, we have to, you have to have a way of backfilling your pipeline with new buyers and flex is a great opportunity, but you got to work these leads, right? You got to work these leads. Well, you got to nurture them well. Um, and the, the payoff is there, but you have to hustle for it. Uh, we talked about 198 million unique visitors to Zillow, uh, every month, uh, buyers connected to, uh, an agent every four seconds. Um, and referrals, you know, the referral opportunity that you get there. So I think it's, you know, 100% worth it. Um, we have some teams uh, that have built their entire business around the Flex program, that that's all they do because, and, and we're talking about uh, teams that are, you know, 100, you know, 200 agents, they built their business around it. Um, and they've learned conversion too. They've learned uh, how to convert, you know, close to like one out of every 10 leads that they get. Uh, and so e-homes, right? E-homes e is one, yeah, e down in, in, uh, in Orange County. Yeah. I don't work with that team, but one of my colleagues says, and they are. And they uh, did over a thousand team. transactions last year. Yeah. And the year before that, I sent out that graphic. What was it? 400 or 30? Yeah, over 400. 400 the previous year, and then they went over a thousand transactions the year after that. Yeah. We have some partners that have expanded teams uh, to different states as well. 
Uh, and that's a little more difficult, but, and you have to have pretty big vision uh, yeah. and business savvy to do that because you're running a, you know, a business as well. Uh, but it's, it's possible. Um, we see, we see teams more often they're expanding uh, into a different market that's catty cornered to where they are. Uh, but it's a market that they, you know, they actually have to find agents in that market. So if you think like San Luis Obispo, right. Or, um, you know, what's, what's North of here, maybe like, uh, where Napa Valley is right. Um, out there, Santa Rosa. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we see, we see teams that are successful able and down in Orange County, right. If you've been Orange County, like LA, Orange County, then there's Riverside, then there's San Diego. Um, we've had some team, we've had some teams that expanded into different market service areas as well. Yeah. Sorry, I don't have a lot. No, that's so good. Really yeah. Well, like, well, you briefly described it kind of like, again, teams that are working in California kind of going into different areas of California. Do you work with any teams or is it an option? Like you have a California like main base team, but like let's say they want to expand their team to like Oregon or something, something yeah. close by. And they're like, all right, well, we're, our main base our, of, of our team is like here. Mm -hmm. Then we want to start a branch, let's say, for example, like in Oregon. Is that something that you guys are? Yeah, we can do that. We've done that. Um, and they essentially, they create a different profile, team profile in Zillow, yeah. and it's run by a different team lead. They may use the same CRM system, but it's really uh, what a team that has really dialed in their business operations. and um they have a, a sense of like hey we want to be up in portland uh, i know of 10 agents there that i can recruit i need to hire a sales manager there i you know they have to be local there and essentially you know you start a business there with you know local agents and leaders out there and you just kind of rinse and repeat great any other questions I have a question. Yeah. Do you see like, um, I don't know, you probably don't work on this directly, but in the app or like the UI for Zillow, are they working on anything to like automate the customer service side of, of like the conversation between us and the client at all? Like say someone inquires on a property, yeah, there could be like a chatbot that instantly responds to them to see like you know, get that initial conversation going. So we know mm -hmm. that, you know, we can get back to them or give them a call to, mm. to move forward. Is that, is that not something you can do on the app already? Where if, cause you can text your- You can um, text them right away. In the app, right? But sometimes, you know, what if we're getting, you know, five calls at once and we're still on the phone with that person, that person's waiting like 15 Well, to someone minutes. like a, a bot that will interact with that yeah, buyer yeah, in between. Yeah. That's a good question. Oh, so um, that's a, mm. I think, yeah. Well, yeah. it's not so low. Yeah, um, not to, if we're not doing that, it's a great suggestion though. Um, yeah. Iron. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and swirls too. Yeah, swirls. <laughs> Did you talk about at all about the... Uh, you had a question. What's it? Yes. That was uh, about how many teams total in Hawaii around him? Ooh, in the San Jose market, I think... I think, um, I want to say there's about 10 teams. I don't work with all of them. I work with a few. Uh, I have a colleague, I have a couple other colleagues that work with. Now, some, some of the teams that cover San Jose also cover uh, um, Oakland, San Francisco. That's another market survey. That's, there's San Jose, there's Oakland, uh, San Francisco. Those are the two major uh, mar uh, market service areas. That's what we call them in the Bay Area. Uh, yeah. So with the San Francisco base, there's probably maybe another 10, 15 more. Uh, and some of them cover a few zip codes in San Jose. Uh, so we consider them part of your service area too. But that mainly focus on San Jose, probably about 10, 10, 15 teams that we work with. Could you touch on the referral, how the referral fee works and all that stuff and how long? Yeah. So uh, the, the Flex program is a referral based program, meaning, you know, you pay when you close a deal. Um, and it, it depends on the price point, but there's a couple of tiers for the referral fee. 
most likely you're going to deal with the top tier because you're, you know, you're selling homes that are in the million plus range. That's 35%. So whatever uh, your commission is, gross commission is, it's 35% of that goes to Zillow. And then the rest is split with whatever team splits are and, and whatnot. Okay, now that happens. I know that's a haircut, right? Again, you have to look long-term at this. If you're looking at only the first transaction, um, this is going to be a hard sell for you. Okay, but if you look at this long term, then you'll see the benefit. And the reason why is um, you pay that referral fee uh, for the maximum of two transactions with that buyer. And now if that buyer refers five friends to you and they buy from you, there's no referral fees on any of those transactions. It's, it, it's just the person who is ever on the contract of the home you're selling. If it's the initial buyer you got connected to, you pay up to two transactions. Okay, now, then that's within um, the first transaction. The second transaction, if it happens within two years of the first transaction, you'll pay the, the referral fee for the second transaction. So if you close a deal with someone and then three years later, uh, they bought another house from you, you wouldn't have to pay the, the referral fee for the second transaction because it's outside of the two year window. Okay, so it's a just think of it this way, a maximum of two transactions that you'll pay the referral fee for in the span of up to four years. That's buying and selling. Like if they like- Yeah, oh yeah, exactly too. If they, uh, if they buy and sell, that's two transactions, then you're done paying the referral fee for that buyer. And we've had clients already that, and even Aaron, I think you guys have one, right? That referred you to their friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got a referral. yeah. A listing also. So a referral. one lead, right? You got uh, three transactions out of it. Yeah, like you, three or four. <laughs> okay, there you go. There's there's Aaron, fuel for the. Like five months. Okay. Brand new, brand new to real estate. Five months. Brand new to real estate. Five months. Um, and you close other deals, I'm sure too. But with that one buyer that you got connected to on Flex, you closed four transactions in five months. We got a contract in two weeks too. Yeah, Super. right. Um, and and uh, that's another key here is uh, you know the follow up and a lot of these buyers. You know, people will. There's two sides of the coin. People who are paying for leads will always tell us your leads suck. You know, can't, we can't do anything with these leads. They're not, they're, they're, you know, they're not qualified or yeah, there's people that call that are just window shopping. Again, remember, you think of the con online conversion rate on average is three to 4%. So that's three that you'll close and then 97, right? That are, you know, not workable or you got to nurture them and you got to take care of them. And some of them may, may pop at some point, right? But I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Aaron. Aaron? Aaron, five months in the business, right? Uh, the, the lead that you got that you closed, they, so you connected with them and within two weeks they were under contract, right? So it's, are there buyers that on Zill that are high intent uh, and ready to go? Absolutely, absolutely. We measure your performance, the team's performance on a rolling six month basis. So we wanna see the skill set of the team and how they convert leads within a rolling six months. Right? And, and, and you know, some teams will tell me like, hey, that's, why don't you measure the whole body of work like you know, a year or, or as long as they've been on flex? Well, we wanna see what you've done recently, the last two quarters, because you could have had a rocky start and we don't wanna hold that against you. We want this to keep rolling. And, and just the reality is there's, you, know, you can close deals really quick here. Um, Louis, how quickly did your deal get under contract? Um, but before I say that, I want to shout out also to AJ because when I got the the uh, deal of Lex Lee, he had to rearrange his schedule to accommodate me. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, after one week, uh, I mean, after a few days that we have shown the house, mm -hmm. then we're writing up the contract. Yep. Yeah. Within a week, right? This this market is moving fast, um, so that's why when I, I meet with uh, Enrique and Jason, you know, we look at the six month, you know, percent to market that conversion relative to the market around them. But we also look at the last thirty days, and and what we're looking for, like you know, I we call them the who who got the gold medal in the last thirty days, 
And, and what I'm looking for is in the last 30 days, who got leads in the last 30 days? And of those leads, how many agents got a deal under contract, right? Because it happens, right? Your, your deal happened within two weeks. Your deal happened, you know, in similar fashion, right? Within a couple of weeks. So how quickly and, and how good are you at nurturing this lead, setting appointments, meeting with these buyers, uh, you're delivering value when you meet them, um, and then getting them to the offer table. So if you want to know what I think as a growth advisor of uh, success for a team is I look at their 30-day performance metrics, and I look at how many uh, agents are getting buyers to the offer table. So if you're getting 10 leads a month in Flex, I'm speaking to the, the Flex team here, if you get 10 plus leads in Flex in, in 30 days, what I'm looking for is how many of those buyers are you getting under contract, right? That may happen, that may not happen, but if not, I wanna see, I wanna give you credit for the work, right? Are you at least getting one or two buyers within 30 days to the offer table? Cause that should be, that, that can happen, right? We've seen it proven a couple of times here already. So that's, you know, that's what I talk about putting in the work and that's why it's measurable. That's what we look at. If, if you're uncomfortable with that kind of scrutiny uh, of, you know, metrics and, and pipeline, then flex is going to be a tough sell for you. But if you're okay with that, if you want coaching, if you want, you know, if you want some, you want to learn how to like level up in this business and you're coachable, you can have a buyer that you get connected to and close four different transactions with them. Can I ask you the Aaron, the total volume of the four transactions altogether? Uh, the one that we closed on Flex was 475. Mm -hmm. And then they're looking for an investment property, like up to 1214. Okay. And then we're going to be buying another property in October for rental. And okay. And then the listing. Well, his friend's trying to buy a property. And then his friend's also selling his property. Wow. I don't know. I mean, it, you know, yeah. Um, let's just call it 5 million, right? Yeah. 5 least, million. No, probably more yeah. than that. Probably close to like eight. Yeah. You know, some, some agents don't even do that much in an entire year, right? And so this is a great opportunity. Hope, hope I'm selling it pretty hard for you, Jason, Enrique, <laughs> uh, for those who aren't on Flex. Well, I think uh, what's important too to share is like our, our first year with Zillow when we were doing market-based pricing, um, we probably spent like thirty thousand dollars on leads that year, and we didn't close any. It was a it was a learning experience. Yeah. Number one is we didn't have enough agents. We were just routing the agent, routing the leads to the agents with no sort of accountability. Yeah. No systems in place. No follow up. Nothing like that. Yeah. And it was just like here's a lead. You know, throwing leads at the agents. Yeah. Don't close it. You know, let me know if they close. Yeah. It wasn't until we started doing coaching at a higher level and learned about the systems and the metrics and all that. Yeah. And then our, since we've joined Flex, I think we have 29 deals already. And then we joined what, August? Yeah. Yeah. August till now, already 29 transactions. Yeah, the accountability part is, uh, it's, and that's what we look for, you know, when, when we're, you know, interviewing teams for Flex is, you know, will, will they be coachable? You know, will they like, you know, take our coaching? And, uh, and it's not, it's not stuff that we develop internally. We learned this from other partners too. We're just sharing it with everyone else. And, um, if, if they're willing to do that, then we have a, we have, you know, a, a base that we can work off of. Um, and yeah, it's, it's about accountability and to numbers, know your numbers. And if you are comfortable with that, I think you're going to be great with flex. So if there's any questions in yeah. the chat. Uh, I think, um, I don't, is there a chat a chat box? Oh, down here. Yeah. Let's click on that. Oh, thank you. Someone said thank you. You're welcome, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk cover any like any strategic stuff, any best practices that you see other teams doing, mm -hmm. any of your other teams that you're working with? Um, I, I think one uh, one of the metrics that um, is important to address is, you know, you if you're good at on, on the phone setting appointments and you meet with buyers, we see teams that typically have like a strong appointment rate, a strong met with rate, but then the offer rate is where it kind of falls off a cliff. So how do we move more of our buyers from 
you know, we're showing homes and we met with them. How do we move them and get them uh, to submit offers, right? Now let's assume that these buyers that you're working with are pre-approved to purchase already. How do you get them? Can I, uh, can I get uh, a couple thoughts here? What do you guys think? What, move, what, what helps you get, where do you see that leap when a buyer whom you've shown five homes to or however many makes that leap to uh, submitting an offer? When do you think that happens? They find the house they like. Okay, so there's a, maybe a certain amount of homes that they need to see. Right, so let's quantify that. Typically, how many homes do you think a buyer needs to see? Maybe like around 10 to 15. 10 to 15, that's a lot. In this market, five. Like in this market, I, I, I agree with you maybe five years ago yeah. that, that it, I don't know if buyers have the luxury. Well, you know, you, you know your local market here. Can you show a buyer like 10, 15 homes in this market right now? Yeah, it's like five to 10. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna, I'm trying to coach, coach the answer. I, I think it's less. I think it's maybe like five, five homes. So what I, what I work with, uh, with my partners is, hey, you know, if, if, you, if you, and I'm speaking the language of those of, of you that are on Flex right now, if you're putting a status of your lead as, hey, I'm showing them homes, what I want to find out is how many homes have you shown this buyer? How many times have you met with them? If you meet the first time, it's like a first date, right? You, you call like, hey, let's, let's meet at two o'clock and go see this. Okay, great. You meet them for the first time. They may or may not like you, right? It's either swirls or no swirls. Right? Okay. So um, <laughs> I'm learning something new. Right? Yeah. Um, and if they, if they like you, right, there's going to be a second date. You know, there'll be a second date, right? Uh, but in order, for, in order for you to get the second date, you have to drive value with that buyer, right? So... Um, how many times have you met with them? How many homes have you shown? Because that's what I'm going to ask. Is like, hey, you know, if uh, if this agent has shown this buyer that they have in showing homes, they showed him like five or seven homes already, uh, and they've met with them like three or four times. You think if you met with the buyer and showed them homes like three or four different times, typically by then do you think they're ready to make an offer? At least one. Okay, at least one, right? So now we can track things, right? You know now. I can, I can talk with Jason and Enrique and say, okay, we have 15 buyers that are in the showing home stage. Of these 15, we get real tactical on this. We read all the notes. How many homes has each of these buyers seen? What can I expect to see moving over to submitting offers by next week? Right? That's, that's accountability. That's, you know, that is, uh, you know, your team leads holding you accountable to um, numbers. And if you've shown them homes, enough homes, and you're, um, you've met with them several times and they're still not ready to make an offer, you know, maybe it's something that we're doing you know, on these meetings. Are we not providing value? So, <clears throat> sorry, long story short, one of the tools that I've seen um, uh, teams implement is called uh, a 10-minute driveway conversation. And I think it's very important in this market. Uh, when Let's say we have, uh, I, Enrique is my buyer that, he's a buyer that I got connected to. We agreed we're going to go see a home. He's on his lunch break, so he only has time to go see one home, okay, uh, down the street. We meet at two o'clock to go see that home, right? We walk through the home. I answer all those questions. Um, at the end of that meeting, I, I want to ask Enrique, hey, Enrique, I know you got to go. Do you have 10 minutes for me? Um, let's go out on the driveway because other people want to see the home, right? You can't overlap. Hey, let's stand in the driveway here. Hey, has Enrique, has anyone ever explained to you, you know, how this goes down and what this market is like right now, what you need to do to win? No, not really. Okay, hey, give me 10 minutes. Let me give you the lowdown. Okay, and then I'm going to hit a couple points. First of all, if it's Saturday and you're seeing that house, let's say you're seeing that house at five o'clock, I'm going to ask you, hey, have you talked to a lender already? Like, if you like this house and the seller is, you know, um, the cutoff date for offers is nine o'clock tonight. If you haven't talked to a lender, we can't make an offer, right? You know, so I need for you to get your ducks in a row on the financing side. If you haven't talked to a lender, I got a guy. His name is Jason. You know, talk to Jason, right? Jason's going to get you hooked up here. Okay. Um, the second thing is, um, hey, I need to know exactly what you're looking for. You kind of told me on the phone call we had, but um, uh, we're going to go see a couple more homes and we're going to rate them on a scale of one to seven. Okay, if it's a five and a half, 
it's offer territory. If it's four or less, okay, based on like, we're gonna have a check, if it's four or less, I'm never gonna show you a home like that again, okay? Thirdly, okay, this market is super tight. I'm gonna set you up on a, a, a drip campaign, okay? And you're gonna get a lot of texts and emails uh, of, uh, of listings that are on the market. And also some, I have access to some shadow listings that haven't hit the market, but they're in an active status right now. If you see a home that you like, I'm a busy person, but just call me, interrupt me, text me and say, I wanna see this home and let me know when you can go see it. Okay, um, in that 10 minute conversation, uh, driveway conversation, I, com I, I communicated you know, some knowledge and value to Enrique because I, I know the local market and what I'm trying to do is drive and drive reasonably the urgency of what's happening in the market right now with that buyer. Right. So if I can get if that if I can get them to make that leap, you know, to submitting offers, that's that's what to me success looks like. Right. If you can drive that trust, if you can drive value for that buyer to trust you really quickly, that you can communicate that you know what you're doing and that you really can help them, um, you can within two weeks get them under contract. Right. And this is doable. So. The 10 way driveway, 10 minute driveway conversation. Um, I think I sent a copy of that to you guys before, yeah. right? I don't know if you talked about it with the team. Did no, you yeah, go over it? Okay. Sure. I gave you a sneak peek of what the Enrique and Jason will cover uh, in a future meeting. But I, I, that has um, really improved the offer rate for a lot of our partners is the agents just realizing, hey, when I meet with the buyer, um, I need to drive the urgency of the market really hard with them. Like, like not in a salesy way, that just, they just know you're after their commission, right? But in a way that's driving value, that you understand the market and that you're, you're gonna go to bat for them uh, uh, to find that home that they want. Andrew, I want to just reiterate how powerful that is, right? Because you gotta understand, we're getting connected with this client online. We go see this property. If we just send them off, you know, to go do what they're gonna do and say, hey, let's set up a consultation or a Zoom, a lot of times what happens during that period they don't it goes to you they go somewhere else they go to another property yeah so you already have them right in front of you right? yeah so you'll be able to have that 10 minutes to show your value and then from there it's going to be a lot easier to take it over to a zoom consultation or get them in the office we'll start with there but yeah so. yeah and the reason why conversion online conversion is is that three or four percent is because a lot of buyers you know they'll use you to go see that first house but then they'll tell you what like hey thank you for that 15 minutes you know i saw the house i'll call you if there's anything else i'm interested in right and then you never hear from them again and it might be because they have another agent or they might have just like hey i got another agent that can do this for me too so you've got to take an opportunity if you got that first date put out you know put your best suit on right uh roll out the red carpet demonstrate that value, right, uh, that you can provide for them. Um, and, you know, uh, you got to win their trust. Yeah, you just got to win them over the best way you can. Just do that sense of urgency. Right? Yeah, yep. Yeah. And it's true. And, and that's, you're not, you're not telling lies there. The market is hot right now. And, you know, listings, as soon as they go up, I mean, you're getting multiple offers that day that it goes live, right? The listing goes active. It's 800,000 over asking. Yeah. What's the highest you've seen? We just lost, uh, for the swirl people, yeah. 700,000. 700,000 over asking. And they still wanted to have swirls. They still want to, that's why they wanted to have swirls. Yeah. We're gonna have swirls either way, for, for this celebration is... or decelebration. <laughs> yes. Can we talk about like uh, I'm a little flexible. Can we talk about the other side of like when you have clients that are let's say for example, uh, I'm gonna wait until October because I have a hard definite October deadline. Right? Sure. How are we supposed to like are we supposed to keep updates with you guys like on a weekly basis? Like what what's the that's why we just say for example another another question would be like mm -hmm. what about these questions? Uh, what about these uh, flexes that maybe are not uh, potential buyers or does the reject button really does it hurt us? Um, well, it still counts towards the conversion rate, right? So every live connection uh, is part of that denominator number, right? The bigger that number is, the more we want you to close. And so 
whether you reject it or not, it's still a live connection. Now, when do you reject it and what happens when you reject it? For those of you who are on Flex, uh, do you get those, uh, the, the my agent notifications where you are seeing what they're looking at? It's kind of creepy, right? Like you know what they're looking at on Zillow, but they don't know that you know, right? Um, so, which is great because then you, then you have an excuse to call them, like a good reason to reach out and say, hey, not sure if you've seen this house, it just went on market. Actually, I know you've been looking at it 15 times. <laughs> you put the heart next to it. I know, I know. And so don't lie to me when I call you. Right? So do you think it's best practice not to tell them? Don't, well, I, I wouldn't tell them that you know that they're looking at me. That's a little, that, that could be, you know. I've been telling people in the beginning, like um, the way that we work is I'm, I have access to, to what you look at so I can respond to you quickly. I like the way you like put that. You yeah, you know what? If you if you frame it that way and and you feel like you know you've had enough buyers that said like, okay, great, that's cool. Yeah. Um, uh, like so yeah, I mean that's the, that's what the feature is for there, right? So that you can see the activity of your buyers you're working with, so you can make better recommendations for them. That's mm -hmm. probably the way to spin it. Is yeah. hey, you know, just so you know, uh, when you're looking at stuff on Zillow, um, it, it it alerts me. So it informs me kind of like what you're looking at, you know? You text then, them, then all of a sudden, like, why are you looking in Hawaii right now? <laughs> yeah, you, you live in California. Stop looking at home in Hawaii. Uh, to answer your question, I'm sorry, what's your name? Rob. Rob. So if you reject, uh, and, and here's why you need to make sure you're going to reject the lead. If you reject the lead, it severs that my agent relationship so you don't see what they're looking at anymore. And then if that buyer decides to uh, inquire on another listing, they, they'll get connected to a different agent on a different team. Okay. So can you reject? Of course you can. There, there might be a valid reason. Like if they say, Rob, if you call me again, I'm um, get a restraining order against you. <laughs> you got to reject that one. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so, well, what about the other side where, mm -hmm. where I'm not ready to buy now? I'm, 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 I'll buy later down the months and Jill is asking us for updates. Yeah. Put it as a nurture. Put it as a nurture status because if you put it as a nurture, um, it, it kind of that's the explanation there. You only have to provide an update once a month on on nurture lead. So I wouldn't reject it because then reject kind of throws it in a bucket where, like, yeah, yeah. you may not get a hold of them again or see what they're inquiring on. Yeah. And, and really quick, we're also going to be providing a solution for those ones that want to wait six months. So we're going to be meeting with Andy and Dana Rick and yeah. providing a solution for that. Right, so the ones that are, that are six months out, eight months out, we're, we're going to you know, work on something like that for you. Yeah. So again, I'll sell a little bit of the benefit of flex and working with a growth advisor like myself. You know, we strategize on things like that. So that how good would it be if you can focus on your high intent buyers? OK, and all your buyers that want to buy in October, you, you know, the, we'll remember that it's your lead, Rob. And if you're doing your job and you're closing well and your metrics are strong, We'll have someone else, we'll have like an assistant or another team work on those leads. And when they pop and they're ready to buy, we'll reassign it back to you in October. No, this, is, this will be something we set up internally here. Yeah, that, no, your team will set that up. How cool would that be, right? Where you can focus on high intent buyers, but not lose out on, you know, maybe that, that person is firing and on a $3 million home, a $4 million home, and I don't want to lose that buyer. But I can't spin my wheels trying to nurture something that's potentially going to close in October when I have high intent buyers that can close in two weeks, right? So I need to be able to divide my time. And that's why, you know, we want to work like to get like strategize. I'm all about conversion, right? I want, to, I want this team to drive the strongest conversion possible. I want your time to be well spent uh, so that you're focusing on leads that you can close today, you know, that you can get under contract today. And everything that's farther out, let's have let's have a different team or a different way of handling those. And if again, if you're performing well right now, you're doing what you know your leaders are asking you to do. You'll get that lead back when it comes active. That's amazing, right? You've got like a personal assistant working for you then, nurturing those leads. Great yes. Question. So um, has Zillow in certain markets started kind of selling seller leads? Kind of like, kind of like flex desk? Uh, no. Yeah, the seller lead program that we had a long, long time ago, that was sunsetted because it ended up being more like rental leads that were coming through. Um, no, we haven't, uh, we don't have a product specifically uh, for, for seller leads yet. Um, I know that would be amazing. 
Uh, but I will say this, um, you know, people that you connect with now on the buy side um, likely have a house to sell too, yeah, right? Yeah, so, um, you, you know, you should always be asking that question, you know, do you, you, know, do you have a home to sell as well? Um, I can help you with that and close two sides, right? More questions? So I think we're at about time. Here. Yeah. We're good. Let's give it up for Andrew, guys. Thanks, everyone. I had a great time and appreciate the engagement.